Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. The consequences of having four or five videos in your head and collecting clips together for those separate subjects often means you get in a muddle. And um, this is one of them days. <laughs> so basically, I started my video this morning with a hi Roger, how are you doing, and what I planned on doing, and then sidetracked and did something entirely different. So that video clip, the start, has now been used in a different video because I changed my mind. So this is a new video start. <laughs> Oh, I am getting in a bit of a muddle at the moment. Concentrate! <laughs> but coming back to the point, um, today is watering the mounts day and feeding them so they'll get done, you know, with the pouring water over them, not with the sprayer. They need a good soak today. And um, there's quite a few of my mounted orchids that get bypassed very quickly because they're not doing a great deal, perhaps, or there's nothing much going on. They're just growing and things like that. So they get ignored as far as videos are concerned. So I really want to pick up on a few of those and um, as part of that uh, I'm going to pick on a couple of telumnias because as you know a while back the whole lot of my telumnias got unceremoniously unmounted, all the old moss taken off and effectively they all got mounted bare rooted. So it might be worth having a look at a couple of those and, and, and seeing if there's any progress on them. Because for quite a long time now, really since that video, they just get watered and ignored. You know, they're either going to make it or they're not. So I'll pick on a few of those and we'll have a look at a few other things that, because they're not in bloom or growing spikes, they never get looked at. So I'll pick up on a few oddities. So... Um, you might see some orchids that you've never seen before today if you're relatively new or don't watch every video. You know, we're going to disappear in the mist now. Orchids in the mist, love it. I mean, this is a good growing day today. We're at 25 degrees and 75% humidity. Topped up every now and again. Stuff grows in that environment very well, given the light and everything. So, okay, let's get going then. Right, so this is my mounted Maxillaria tenuifolia, the coconut orchid. It's just finished blooming. Literally, I took the old blooms off, which were black, <laughs> today. But obviously they finished a while ago. But that's how they seem to go. They don't fall, not for a very long time. So I just break them off once I get fed up with looking at them. But the growth on this one... I think is better this year and the reason I think it's better is that when I water this I water the whole plant so all of these extensions up here with these sheaths on get a good soaking as well as the base of the plant and as a consequence you can see that the oldest pseudo bulbs are a little bit wrinkled but what we've got on the extensions at the moment is every single bulb has a pair of new growths on it um, which potentially if given enough water and nutrients, will mature and bloom next year. Now, I've never had a mass blooming on this plant. Um, in fact, this year it had four. That's the most it's ever had. But that's better than the previous year when it had two. So progress. Okay, this is one of the telumnias. It just happened to be the first one that I picked up, first on the list. Now, progress on this one. The um, left-hand plant which is obviously separate to the right when I split this one up or when I unmounted it to remount it bare rooted parts of the plant were so badly desiccated as to not be recoverable so I cut them off and in doing so I ended up with two plants now there are still some desiccated leaves on this plant so it's still not hydrating as well as it should be but some of the leaves have rehydrated and the left hand plant has a new growth that had no new roots on but there is just signs of new roots forming at the base of that left hand new growth the right hand plant has some old fans at the back that are quite small and quite desiccated quite honestly but the fan at the front of the plant's not too bad and that fan has now got two new growths on it one pushing up from inside that leaf with the bulge, which is on the right hand side of the shot at the moment, that bulge is the base of that new fan. And you can see it split the leaf. And as it, as it grows, it will split that leaf right off and, 
and it is pushing out new roots at the base of both of those new growths. Now new growths on telumnias can progress at quite a rate and get to blooming size quite quickly, providing they've got a reasonable bit of backup, you know, with some other fans. You could be looking at um, a new growth in early spring that blooms by the end of that year, providing it's got a decent plant behind it to support it. However, if you've got one little fan with one new growth on it, that new growth may never bloom. But the next one should. Okay, so yeah, I'll uh, keep my eye out as I go round um, and I'll, I'll see what the others look like. But that just happened to be the first one I picked up and it is showing progress. Let's have another look, a look at another Tulumni. I'm certainly not going to film them all. This is Sunset Pink. I can't remember whether this one's bloomed for me, but if it has, there will be a pop up. Now, this one wasn't too badly desiccated, but you can see what is effectively the lower left of the shot that's desiccated leaves you see all those ridges and creases that's not what they're supposed to look like yeah that's what they're supposed to look like on that new growth plump fleshy almost succulent that's what telumnia leaves should look like but as far as recovery is concerned on this one i'd say good Lovely strong new growth on the right hand plant with some good roots pushing out and another new growth pushing out to the left. I said right hand plant, it's actually one plant, this isn't two separate plants, it's one unit um, connected by a very very tight rhizome. Um, but yeah, two new growths on there, the left hand new growth will fight some roots out through that bottom leaf of the fan, they'll just force their way through, they bully their way out if they're confined and um, the other new growth has already got a freeway for its uh, new roots and you can see them pushing pushing through some have actually reached the bark through the back there some are coming round the plant some are coming out this side but um, yeah so I mean that's a recovered telumnia despite still having some desiccated leaves on the old fans but the fan that's sticking up the highest um, which is one of the older ones, that one plumped up again. It's just that one on the very left there that just didn't plump up. And it probably never will now. And those leaves will eventually die back and I'll probably cut that fan off sometime down the line. But it's coming on. Right, this is the worst one. This is Tolumnia Fantastic. And um, there was virtually nothing worth keeping on this plant. But because it has a nice bloom I thought I'd try. Now this is a demonstration of what you're up against if you ever get scale on a telumnia. The sheaths have been removed, um, that's an old spike not a sheath, but on the back of that leaf is an adult scale. So they have survived. Now that one's dead because this is just, you know, all my plants have just been treated. But although it's brutal, I've just torn the bottom leaf off of that plant to show you. Now, I'm not sure I can do this with one hand. But I know the signs because I've had to live with these little blighters so I can tell by the coloration on a leaf. Um, inside that leaf, I'm going to have great difficulty in trying to open that leaf with one hand. In fact I don't even think I can do it. But inside that leaf are two adult scale. Oh, there we go, look, there he is, on the end of my thumbnail, yeah? So that's not even inside a sheath, that's inside the very base of a leaf. And if you can imagine, on such small plants, you get an infestation of scale down inside those leaves at the base of the plant, they basically eat the base of the plant off, if left untreated. Now, I don't think this one's actually going to make it because I can see, let's see if I can count them, <clears throat> keep this still if I can. Right, starting from the right hand side there's a tiny little green tip and next to it is a leaf that's got yellow marks on it. I know without looking those are scale on the inside of that leaf. So they're on that plant. Now it's been sprayed and they should die but they may have already done too much damage 
There's no sign of any new growths on that. That leaf that I was just talking about with the yellow marks on was an attempt at putting out a new growth that's failed. So whether it can try again or not, I don't know. That one may be too far gone. So never let scale get on your um, telumnias. It's one of the few orchids that they can actually kill. Now scale can do a lot of damage, <laughs> but there aren't many plants they can actually take down and kill. But they can with telumnias. Really they can. So keep on top of the little blighters if you can. So that's a bad one. Now, despite all the efforts of the scale, this one's going to make it. It's a tiny little plant. Um, it never grew that well, but it was a lot bigger than that until I had to take old parts of the plant off and start again, basically. So I'm back to where I was when I bought it. But unlike when I bought it, I do have live roots and more coming and two new fans growing on it. So... Um, that one's going to make it. Now that's a no ID hybrid. That was just one I got off the internet to, to bulk up a package at some point, I think. So, um, and I, as a consequence, I've got no blooms to go with it or anything. But, you know, despite being a small plant, this one looks quite healthy. The leaves are good. They've got that little bit of coloration on them, which implies they're getting enough light. Possibly a fraction too much, but they, they can take it. As I say, in the wild, these things are often growing in full sun, and they take it. But we've got new roots. I've just watered that one deliberately so that you can see they go green. They hydrate incredibly fast on telumnias. They're designed that way. And two new fans. So although it'll be a while, it's made it. It's going to recover. So that's a good one, even though it's still tiny. Now this is the other telumnia. In fact, it's the only telumnia I've got blooms on at the moment. Um, this is the other one that I got from a Kearns. This is telumnia peach. And um, as a consequence, it's highly likely it was infected because I know somebody who bought one at the same show, off the same stand, probably the one that was next to this one hanging up on the rack. So um, the chances are this was an infected plant, but it's responded if it was, because I mean the two new growths are pushing out reasonably strong, that's two separate pieces, um, with a new growth on each, and both of those new growths are doing their own roots, so I think that one's at least well on the way to recovery if it hasn't actually recovered. The older parts of the plant are a little bit desiccated, but not too bad. So there's enough support there to get those new growths going. And providing they're clean, you know, then that plant's going to be fine. But um, certainly pushed up a really good spike this time. It's been in bloom for absolutely ages because the spike keeps branching. So another tip if you've got telumnias. When the first flush of flowers die back, don't cut the spike. It may well branch out. This one's branched out three times. So original flowers followed by a branch, flowers, branch, flowers, branch, and the last lot of flowers. I don't think it's going to branch again, but I still won't cut the spike just in case. <laughs> this one obviously has a branching nature to its spike. Not all telumnias do. So you may not ever see a branch. You may see the original blooms, you leave the spike, and it'll just go brown and die back and never branch. Some are like that, but a lot do branch. So give them a chance. Don't just hack them off. So that's that one. I think that one's going to be fine. Well, what I said earlier about plants being tough as old boots, there are limits. Um, this is my Brassavola nodosa that was a lovely big strong plant. And it had two fantastic new growths pushing out and I promptly dropped it flat on its face and broke them both off. So those are the two stumps that should have been next year's blooms. So it set it back quite badly. Um, this is the latest new growth. Now I'm not quite sure what it thinks it's up to because this is a single leaf type plant. You know, long slender pseudo bulbs tucked up in sheaths with a big fleshy leaf sticking out the top. So I'm not quite sure what that is or is meant to be. It's certainly not the flower spike <laughs> and it's not supposed to have two leaves so that's some sort of distortion. But tucked down at the back there 
there is another new growth and in fact it's immediately behind what is now the left hand stump there's another new growth pushing out so again in response to damage it, the plants pushing out farther back and it might not have finished yet oh no it hasn't finished if you look at the what is now the right hand stumpy bit again see the green tip so the consequence of breaking those two new growths off is two new growths a bit farther back on the plant that's the response to the damage um, as I say what that new growth is going to do I really don't know I haven't seen the plant do that before but anyway this needs a good soaking but, um, it's it's got some growing roots there are root tips in amongst the older ones um, so it, it's coming on but as I said it was badly set back so it's now into recovery it happens okay this bit is for Margaret East yeah um, recently watched one of her videos and she bought a Catlia and some other things from eBay seller based in Madeira or is it Madeira whatever <laughs> um, but I bought three Miltoniopsis sorry Miltonias come on it's not that early in the day um, and all three of them were infected but when I got them, I didn't really know much about this. So I just didn't know why they weren't growing very well. And they never did. And then one of them started to die. And um, that one is lost. But um, luckily, because of my Catlia related problem, I started looking into things and found an individual seller that had supplied me with a shed load of infected plants. Um, and most of those are now gone they never made it some of them just died before I'd even heard of the F word um, and I, I never knew why at that time well at least now I know why and I know to do something about it so um, these are the two Miltonias that are recovering yeah in amongst that moss are some nice roots with some green tips I'm not going to hook them all out for you <laughs> there's a fungus gnat on my by my thumb oh I hate those things they're not really damaging though but this one's pushed out a new growth that is heading up towards maturity and um, it's got some green tipped roots on it so I would class it as on the mend I'm not classing it as recovered it's on the mend and with the continuing treatment program what I'm really looking for on this is the next new growth because there still could be some residual infection at the base of that new growth because of when it pushed it out and when the treatment was was given um, but what I'm after is another new clean growth and then I'll be happier with the plant and what I would probably do at that time is take that growth and the next new one that's going to come out off of that old pseudo bulb because that's where the worst of the infection would be on the oldest part of the plant um, has that got a name it probably has that's Miltonia castania a um, I've got any blooms for these I think one of them was in bloom when I got it and it's the same with this one this one never grew well it just didn't but it was the better of the three um, and once I discovered the problem and dealt with it I ended up with two leaved older bulbs that are okay you know it's, they've kept their leaves and a reasonably strong new growth that was tiny at the time which has now pushed on and is currently maturing and it's maturing at around the same size if not slightly bigger than the previous two that's a telltale sign that it's making good progress and the other telltale sign is nice roots all over the place with green tips that are actively growing and not failing so I'm happy to say that one's made it but it's still classed as recovering at the moment but that's my two anyway from the place in Madeira I can't remember its name but um, uh, you'll find it if you go on eBay just look for anything for for sale from Portugal you'll soon find it I think there's only one 
Anyway, that's my two. That was just for Margaret to show my two plants, you know. I'm not sure she's uh, actually going to make it with her cat Leah, but you never know. Get the treatment in there. Give it a chance. Don't give up on them and set fire to them in the yard. So that's my two. What was that one again? That, oh, that's Mil Miltonia Queen Anne. That has lovely deep purple blooms on, if it ever does. So, you know, that latest growth on that plant is blooming size. It's big enough. But whether the plant's got strength to actually do it, I don't see any signs down in those um, leaves. No, it's probably going to wait for the next growth and then give it a go. But I think that plant's okay now. Not, not classed as clean, you know, but okay. Doing okay. A long, long time ago, in the dim and distant past, I actually told this plant off in a video. I basically said, if you don't grow new roots, you will die. Simple. But your choice. And it sat there and did nothing. And did nothing. <laughs> Suddenly it's decided to do as it's flipping told and grow some new roots. I must admit that the mini Phalaenopsis just do not seem to have the vigour or the strength that their bigger ones, you know, their you know, big strappy things like that. Those just seem to bully their way through life, whatever you do to them, or they do for me anyway. But the mini ones I have trouble with. And I don't even remember when or where I got this and whether it's ever bloomed. Chances are it was probably in bloom when I got it, but there's no signs of the old spike or anything. I don't quite know why I've got this. <laughs> I've got a clue what it looks like. But it pushed out that root on the left, which is now branched and attached. And recently it's pushed out another one on the right. And there is a nubbin at the base of the plant that is highlight, highly likely to be another root. So it's going to make it. I mean, it's dropping one of its oldest leaves. That's natural process anyway. But it's growing a new one at the top. And it seems that the roots coincided with the leaf. Now, which one triggered which, I don't know, or whether it just got its act together and decided to do both at the same time. But it's going to pull through. You know, it's going to make it now. And one day, again in the dim and distant future, it might actually produce a bloom, and then I might remember why the hell I got it in the first place. You lazy tyke. Still, it's working on it. Uh, this is a strange one. This is in the why won't you bloom category. But I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not sure whether it's actually blooming size or not. But I would think so now, even if it may not have been before. You've got the three old bulbs in the centre there, one of which is still hanging onto a leaf desperately. And then the two slightly crinkled ones, which is natural for this plant apparently, um, to the back. Um, both still hanging on to their leaves in pretty good nick. And then um, you've got the two outer bulbs, which are this year's growths. And they're, they're bigger, well, certainly at least as big, um, if not slightly bigger. And good new leaves and everything like that. Um, roots have come out all over the place on this one. This didn't, it had roots, but they weren't exactly brilliant. But, um, you know, as part of this year's growth, it now has... A good set of roots, some good attachment roots and some good dangly ones. Um, so I see no reason why now this plant shouldn't bloom. But without checking, I don't know what time of year would be its natural cycle and whether I need to do anything, you know, like cool it down in the winter. So I'll have to look it up. It's Bifrenariae Harrisoniae, A-E. <laughs> Bifrenaria. I got a feeling when it was first discovered, it was thought it was a dendrobium, which certainly don't look like one to me. But anyway, that's what it's called. That's what it looks like. And the blooms are a little bit different in their shape and highly fragrant. I'll let you know if I ever see any. So far, not a light. But we shall see. I mean, if that right-hand bulb doesn't bloom, then it probably, the plant never will. I mean, that's about as good as a good a growth as I can get on it. But we'll see. I might do a little look up on this one and see if it needs something. You know, it might be one of those that needs to chill down in the winter to trigger a spike. I don't know. But if I go and look, I'll know. So I'm just being lazy on this one, really. And it's a shame because the blooms are quite attractive and highly fragrant. I've got a feeling, 
very distant memory, probably when I first got the plant, that they're quite long-lasting as well. So I might go and look that one up and stop being so lazy.